Um, I'm just wondering if the layers of the, the cause continuing by the, the effect base uh, denial of the emotion, yep. is that like blockages in our fear when we're trying to get to the grief? Yes. What actually happens is every time we take an action to cure an effect, we are actually adding to a blocking belief around our cause. D does that make sense to you? Yeah, totally. We're adding to a blocking belief around our cause. We're actually adding to the layers now that it's going to take us to get into our cause. Yeah, and I'd imagine that that creates a bigger facade. It does, yeah. certainly. It's related to the facade. Obviously, the more and more fear and blocks to the fear that are created, the more we come to live, become a, we become a person that we're not even really. At, at this stage, many of you don't know each other. And you know why the reason why that is? Because because most of you don't know yourselves yet <laughs> and you present a facade to each other and when you present a fa facade to each other how can somebody else know you they can't and so what we're we're in this layers and layers of of blocks now all and every time we respond to the effect a pain, particularly a painful one every time we respond to it we're creating another layer of blockages in around the cause as well at the same time there's more resistance in other words yeah to getting to the cause and just on a big picture note is the financial crash and a big example of the denial of the cause and it just gets bigger <laughs> totally until the event just hits and it's a complete Breakdown. Yeah, if you look at it, at, uh, like this, is, the financial crisis is a good illustration of what we do as a human race. So what we do is we make out that everything's fine. We do this all the time, don't we? And so we make out everything's fine, an event is caused. So one country goes into total financial ruin, like Ireland in the European Union, for example, goes into total financial ruin. And everybody says, oh, that's just Ireland. Right? So they another layer of denial around the cause. Which the cause is this, this, these huge problems that we have emotionally. All of us, even here, have with regard to money, finances, how the financial system works, why we want it working the way it's working, and all these other issues are what's creating a lot of these events. They're all unloving. The way the monetary system works is unloving, and, and we, we've got a lot of denial about it, right? And so one country goes into financial ruin. And so what do the other countries do? They bail them out. So, so what the government does first is they get the people in the country to bail it out. So what they do is they tax the people more and that raises enough finances generally to bail out the problem. But when the people can't be taxed anymore, they then ask for help from other countries. And you know how the other countries help them? By taxing their people more, yeah. <laughs> right? And, and so all of us start to feel the pain of the bailouts of irresponsible handling of money and this idea, like what, what's caused a lot of it with a, in the European Union, is this idea that I should be able to have what I want now. The reality is most of us still believe that, that we should be able to have what I want right now. Whether it's loving or unloving, I want it and I should be able to get it right now. And some countries have that emotion to a much larger degree than others. Right? But anyway, they, that causes the event further. And then we get a second one, like uh, you know, Portugal has financial problems. It goes into what you would call in a company issue, receivership basically. And, and, and then because everyone wants to prop up the system or prop up the country, they then feed more into it, more people are taxed, more people get hurt and so forth. But, but the underlying emotion of what I, I must have what I want right now doesn't get addressed. And it's still in most countries. Right? And so we have this cycle of cause, cycle of denial. Everybody says, no, no, it's not, not bad enough yet for us to do anything. You know, $11 trillion worth of the United States debt isn't bad enough for the United States to deal with its debt. Because they just had a meeting a few weeks ago and they decided that they couldn't deal with the issue and they've put it, postponed it. 
So it's obviously not bad enough yet. <laughs> huh? And this is what we do. We postpone what's bad. Have you noticed we do that in your personal life? You know, you get a bit of a sore on your foot. Instead of looking after it and loving it and caring for it, you know, and then trying to work out what its cause is, what do we do instead? Ah, oh, yeah, we'll be right. Put on the same boots that cause the same problem. Put on the same boots. We'll wear them in, you know, like put it on. And before we know it, we've got a great big sore there that, uh, that there's a threat of going gangrenous if we uh, don't do something about it. And that's what we're like with life. And that's what the financial system is like, exactly the same. We're all just a mirror of this process. And we don't want to address the cause, so again, we, we somehow try to deal with the painful effects. So then another country, Greece, goes belly up. Right? And in Greece, the, a big emotion in Greece, in fact, I saw a quote recently which was really funny. They said that in most countries, the people have to forgive the politicians for what the politicians have done. In Greece, the politicians need to forgive the people for what the people have done. And the reason why that is, is because in Greece, yeah, everybody does have that big emotion there of, I want what I want right now. And if I don't get it, I'm going to do my Grecian thing, which is usually, you know, have a lot to say about it, even though there might not be too much truth with what's going on. And so, so, so there's this further collapse. Now, there's a country, the one country in the European Union, Germany, who is able to basically relinquish or, or help all of these other countries because their economy is doing better than all of the other, those other three that I just mentioned put together. But does that seem fair to you? To have a country that looked after things and have done the right thing by their people financially. They haven't taken the steps of, you know, we'll take what we want right now, thank you very much. And instead they've been what you would call fiscally um, responsible, right? And, uh, and yet they're now bowing out the countries that have been exactly the opposite to that. So of course they're a bit resistive. You can understand that, can't you? It's like, it's like you, you know, you've been saving and scrimping and you've care, taken care of your finances and everything and your next door neighbour, he's just gone on world trips and he's, he's gone on, you know, holidays here, holidays there, he doesn't work at all, he just expects everybody to give everything to him and then he goes financially into ruin and then he comes along to you and says, oh, I want your money now, thanks. And would you feel that happy about that? Definitely not. Most people would not, would they? And, and yet that's what the Germans are being asked of them right now. And of course, they're quite resistive to that idea and concept. Hence, the issue is not resolved. And while the issue is not resolved, what's happening? The whole world market now, the pain is, the whole world market now has got these painful effects happening. The whole world now has this slumps in their finances, all the share markets are going, you have drops of 5% a day in some cases over the last few weeks and then it rises by a couple, very volatile. And all of this is happening because of the uncertainty, right, in the market, but the problem still doesn't get addressed. The problem being, we every, all of us still want what we want right now, thank you very much. <laughs> right, still not addressed. Natalie, you want to ask? I'm just wondering um, about the effect of spirit attack, spirit attacks and effect, but how, um, I, I don't know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm under lots of spirit attack and... The well, spirit attack is an effect, yeah. So then what's the cause that drives that? Well, it's always our hook into spirits and why we allow them to attack. Okay. Yeah, but if I can continue on the Sorry. analogy. So now we've got a worldwide event imminent right because we've got the major power of the economy comes from the USA and Europe western consumption we add very little to it because we're such a small country our entire economy is less than the economy of California 
In fact, it's far less than the economy of California. California's economy is far more than, I think it's about 165 other countries, separate economies, right? Just one state in the USA. Yeah. So now a worldwide event is imminent. And what do we still do? We still want what we want when we want it. Thank you very much. So when's it going to change? It's only going to change when the worldwide event happens economically and all of us feel the pain of it. And you know what we'll go through first? What do you go through first in any... With it? What's the grief process? You know the grief process. What is it? No, no, there's one before then. Ah, yes. Denial. We will all deny that we had anything to do with it. And then we, what's the next step? Anger. We'll all get angry that somebody else was the cause. And then what's the next step? No, no. No, this is the, the steps of, of dealing with grief. Who, who knows the steps of dealing with grief? No, you're guessing. There's somebody... Karen, you know the effects of dealing with grief. So, sorry, go. Right into the mic. Denial, anger, bargaining. Bargaining. Yeah, very good. Then depression and then acceptance. But if you believe that. Depression. And acceptance. <laughs> We've got a long way to go, have we not? Because where are we when it comes to the financial position? We're in denial. <laughs> right? So we go through denial. No, it's not happening. Not happening, not happening. And then all of a sudden, our own bank account is not even accessible. I can't say it's not happened anymore. Right? Then I go into anger. How dare the bank do that to me? How come they collapse? What's wrong with them? You know, that's the stage where we're basically blaming everybody around us, right? And then what do we try to do? We try to bargain with the whole process. Well, maybe I can get some of the money back. Maybe I could do this or maybe I could do that. And we can try to arrange something so that something works out in the long run. And we try to, you know, do all of this stuff. And then all of a sudden we realise we get to the point where that's all useless. And what do we most of us feel when it's all useless? Yeah, we suppress everything. We suppress our anger, we suppress our fears, everything. And we just go into this place. What's the point of living? What's the point of doing anything? And then after we get through that, which is a process of having to feel our... If we, we have to feel our denial, we have to feel our anger, we have to feel our fear, and then we get into our grief. And we actually, during this stage, eventually get to the point where we accept the grief of the cause and we process it. And we end up in acceptance. We accept that we were a part of the creation of this worldwide cataclysmic economic event. That's what we do.